In this video traders, we are going to address the question kindly sent in by a subscriber, which is how to find trades on a one minute chart. Stay tuned for this one. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. And by the way, I appreciate all your comments, questions, support, likes, shares, etc. It's much appreciated. Thank you for supporting the channel, guys. Okay, so this is a question came in from a subscriber, and this person said, Hey, how do I find trades on a one minute chart? So let's have a look at that in detail. So the way that I approach things, and by the way, this is just my approach, guys. This is the way that works for me. Everybody's slightly different. Some people agree, some people disagree. But if I share with you um, kind of what I feel works the best, then you can kind of look at it and go, yeah, you know what, I'll adapt it and adjust it, or you know, not for me, I'll look at something else. So this is the way that I approach stuff. If we're looking at this as a one minute chart, okay, the danger you've got is if you're constantly focusing on a one minute chart, you miss the real kind of fuel to the fire. And the real fuel to the fire is on a higher time frame, because the money is moved over a period of days, of weeks, of months. You know, big money flows in that manner. Big money can't, just physically can't flow in a few minutes. Now it does from time to time, which is why we get kind of big price spikes and things like that. But putting those to one side, which are a kind of separate rare opportunity, or depending on how you look at it, it can be a hindrance if you're already in the trade. But let's look at you know the general feeling of the market. So money moves. Hedge fund managers make a decision, uh, governments make a decision, companies make a decision, bigger traders make a decision, and that is executed over time. And that shows itself in trends. So first of all, we need to look at the bigger picture. And we're starting to kind of work our way down. So the bigger picture we look at on our daily, and let's say for example, we look on our daily and we have an uptrend. So the, clearly the buyers are in control. Uh, we don't see any evidence perhaps of the trend ending. We never know, but we don't see any obvious evidence. So we kind of go, right, we're, we're an uptrend on the daily. And then we start to look at uh, maybe a 60 minute or a 50. We don't have to look at both here, but we start to go down one time frame. We want to kind of see what's happened in the last perhaps few weeks or 10 days or something like that. And then we start to see and go, well, okay, we've been in a range in the first 10 days, but maybe we're breaking out of the range now in the second part. So, okay, the long thesis looks okay. We've got a bit of strength coming in. We're strong on the daily. And we started to see some strength in the latter part of the 10 day period, looking at the 60 minute or 50 minutes. So maybe now, you know, we can see some strength. And now we start to go down to our lower time frames. And again, we don't have to do all of these time frames. We're just trying to get the, the information we need. So we now go down to maybe a five or a three before we finally go down to the one. So before we get to the one, we've done a lot of work on our way down there. And we've said, okay, on our one minute time frame, now we're looking for a long on our one minute time frame because we're aligning ourselves with the higher time frames, which are along a line. Again, I've just used a kind of broad example here. Obviously, it's never going to be as simple as this, but we time to get an idea. And then we go, right, now what I want to look for on my one minute chart is a long. And that aligns me with my higher time frames. So I'm starting to become more clinical about how I approach it. So my one minute chart, and maybe, and let's just say hypothetically, this is probably too perfect, but you know, <laughs> let's just use it for now. Let's say there was a support level there from yesterday, or it was yesterday's low, for example. It's quite common actually to see this kind of thing. Market comes down, tests it, pushes back up, tests it again and pushes back up through. Now, you know you're looking for a long, but you're also seeing an actual kind of set up on a lower time frame to say, right, okay, well, I'm gonna take that as we break through. I'm gonna kind of put a stop there or whatever you, wherever you put your stop, and I'm gonna look for a move up there. So what we look, how we're looking for setups on our one minute is we're just going down and, look, and deciding what we're going to trade. Now, it could well be that this is mixed, right? You could say, well, the daily's mixed in a range, this is mixed. And so on a one minute chart, I want to trade mean reversion, i.e. selling highs, buying lows. But where do I want to trade that? Well, yesterday's high is quite a good place to do it. Yesterday's low is quite a good place to do it. A double top after we've made the initial top might be a good thing. So you have kind of strategies that are already there that you can use. Classic double tops at prior highs, classic fake outs to lows, gap fills, all this kind of stuff. But you then subtract or add depending on your higher time frame. So what you don't want to do is just be looking at one minute going, oh, you know, there's a bull flag there or there's a bear flag there, there's a double bottom there. You need to put it in the context of what's going on. Now, you know, if we had this context of a double bottom here, but actually on our daily, on our 60 minute and 15, we just had a brutal downtrend and maybe we'd had, 
kind of this sort of move on the 15 minute and it was literally just poking up slightly and we kind of come down from here, then, you know, if we start to see this, imagine that happens to be our one minute chart, then that's probably not gonna be that much of a great double bottom trade. You know, we'll probably end up buying something that's actually about to fall through the floor because the most pressure is coming from the higher time frames to the downside. And so we have to put it in context of where we are. In this case, you'd like, well, I don't wanna take a double bottom. My higher time frame is telling me I need to probably sell dips to highs because we've pulled back and now it looks like we're about to approach lows again. So maybe I want to look for a kind of double top type scenario, or maybe I wanna look for breakout through lows type scenario. So how you frame your one minute setup very much depends on the higher time frame, And you know, you have to kind of understand that that's where the bigger pressure is coming from. The one minute can only do so much. You know, what happens in 10 minutes of trade is pretty minimal compared to what's happening in 10 days of trade, 10 weeks of trade even, you know, that's where the real kind of pressure is and the money flow is. And so if you align yourself with that as best you can, I know it's easier said than done, and it's not always so clear cut, but that helps you then not get caught up in chop. It helps you kind of try to look for something specific rather than going, oh, I'm looking for a double bottom. No, I'm not looking for a breakout. No a double bottom, a breakout. Flip-flopping back and forth and confusing yourself. Easier to align yourself with the bigger picture, work out what you're looking for in the day ahead or some ideas you're looking for in the day ahead and then try to position to execute from those. Appreciate the question and keep your risk managed, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.